Chapter 4. A Test of Trust How dare you come back here? Have you forgotten what you did? Lua had his axe up against Tahu's throat in the opening to the Great Temple. Tahu knows that coming back here could spell his doom, and at the hands of his brothers. He looks into Lua's green, glowing eyes. How could I forget? I've suffered for my actions every day since. Tahu looks down past Lua, his mind traveling back to that fateful day. The day he lost control after the Rikshi infected his mind and sent him on a rampage against his sister, Gali. The day ended with Gali dead in Anua's arms, and Tahu being banished to the darkest corners of the universe. His mind comes back to the present again. He looks at Lua, then at the axe up against his throat. I found something, brother. A chance at retribution, and a chance at rebuilding what we lost after Mata Nui was defeated. Lua looks at him with skepticism. Can he trust Tahu? Can he trust the former Toa that gave in to his anger and shattered the trust bestowed upon them by the Metorn? What could he possibly have found that could rebuild that trust and bring them retribution? Lua removes his axe from Tahu's throat, sheathing it on his back. Let's talk. Drendor is standing at the entrance to the bridge leading to the Great Temple. He's admiring the architecture of the Matoran. Something his home is missing. Perhaps the great cities of old before Sterax invaded could have looked similar. But that was before Drendor's time. This is taking too long. Tahu was just going to get in contact with his friends, and then they were off towards the Colosseum to face against Teradax. Drendor walks over to the bridge. The archway in front of it is too short for him to walk through. He grabs one of the columns and crouches down under the arch and gets on the bridge, his heavy footsteps almost shaking the bridge as he walks across it. He stops halfway across as he spots Tahu alongside four other similar-sized people, also sporting different colors. Tahu walks up to Drendor. These are my Toa brothers, Lua, Kopaka, Onua, and Pohatu. This here is Drendor. He's not from our world but he has agreed to help us defeat Teradax. And in return, he will go back to where he came from. Drendor can feel the other Toa staring daggers at him. And why wouldn't they? He would have done the same. Kopaka walks up to the Dark Lord. Tahu tells us that you've referred to yourself as Makuta. Every Makuta except Teradax is dead. So how can you be one of them? Drendor looks at the White Toa. Where I come from, we do not have Makuta. We have demigods and demons. But if I am to take down Teradax, I need to beat him at his own game. Lua looks up at Drendor, then down at Tahu. Makuta Teradax is the master of shadows. Not a single being still left alive can defeat him. What makes you think you can? Pohatu points towards Lua and looks at Drendor. What Lua says is true. How can we trust that you pull through and keep your end of the deal? Drendor crosses his arms and looks down at the five Toa warriors before him. From what I've gathered, you don't have a choice but to trust me. And regarding Teradax, Drendor grabs the giant staff from behind his back. The Toa clearly took a step back in defense at the sight of the weapon. He will need to use more than manipulation and political tactics to take me out. Tahu holds out his hands in agreement, and looks at the other Toa. It's a deal, then. Let's go save the future.